I had this kind of um, time when I, I, everyone thought I was dead. And, uh, I wasn't. Um, but I didn't really do a lot, you know. I mean, like, I made records that were secret. Like, I used to make them and then keep them under my bed for about four years until someone wanted to buy them all cheap to sell on, on some far-flung website somewhere. But in the meantime, I also wrote a book about stuff. Um, and, like, because this is a rock club and also because it's Seattle and it's so famous for being a sort of groovy rock kind of town. <laughs> I can't possibly do a reading from my book in this house, in this place, can I? Yeah. 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 So I'm going to anyway. Yeah. Um, I've got... The what? Soda factory. Soda factory. No, it was a lemonade factory, actually. I worked in it for ten weeks. It's the longest I've had a real job in my life. I'm glad you've done your research. <laughs> I'm going to read this, and then I'm going to get the, um, the gang up to help me along, because I'm too old for this on my own, you know. Um, <laughs> so, right. <clears throat> um, yeah. Um, right, I'll start then, shall I? <laughs> You read, I'm started, yeah. You ready? Yes. Yeah. Oh, no. I don't know what I'm reading, actually. Hang on a minute. I see it. Yeah, this is quite nice. This is 1976. I answered an advert in the Melody Maker. The Flying Tigers needed a rhythm guitarist. That could be me. I like tigers. <laughs> The bloke on the other end of the phone was an American pretending to be a Cockney. He sounded like Dick Van Dyke in Mary Poppins. <laughs> so I, oh, blimey, mate. <laughs> like Canadian or something, you know. Um, a number was a kebab shop in Clapham. The American was the singer in the group, and that was where he worked, in the kebab shop. The Flying Tigers played garage, garage or garage music, as I suppose you'd call it. The Standouts, the Chocolate Watch Band, and a mixture of R&B and Chicago blues. Hoochie Coochie Man by Muddy Waters and Killing Floor by Howlin' Wolf. The singer was called Mike. He liked the sound of me, said I should come to an audition they were holding in San Sunday in what he called Battersea which we call Battersea. <laughs> I, should, I should bring my axe and an amp. So I went there on the bus with my Honer Orgophon 40 watt amplifier with the jukebox speakers and my top 20 guitar in a flop, floppy blue plastic case. Their lead guitarist arrived with a brand new Salma combo in red vinyl finish and unpacked a Gibson from a professional-looking hard case. He had a gingery beard and long blonde hair. He was wearing a green velvet jacket with enormous lapels and high-waisted denim flares. I found out later that he was a school teacher in real life. <laughs> he looked somewhat dismayed when he saw me. My hair was very short, badly cut, and I was wearing an ancient pair of straight Tesco jeans, old plimsolls with no socks, and a blue and white striped long sleeve t-shirt. I was thin, spotty, and very possibly drunk. I said hello, and a speaker fell out of the front of my amplifier, <laughs> as though it was winking at him. I was just what they weren't looking for. Best you know. What shall I do? Shall I get the? You don't want to hear any more, do you? <laughs> shall I? Shall I get the? Um, shall I get the, the, the group on so yeah. we can see what we can do? Yeah. Singers and dancers and stuff like that. 
they're, they're, they're gonna be great. They're gonna wear, they promise to wear these powder blue suits. Like, nobody looks good in powder blue. Powder blue polyester suits. Yeah. They're gonna be called a touch of class. So, ladies and gentlemen, would you please give a warm round of applause for a touch of class?